Nick Randall. Thank you to the percentage of you that stuck around. <laughs> I'm a math teacher, I'll figure it out later. Uh, normally when I get on stage and do comedy, I don't like to be controversial. I don't like to bring up subjects that will upset people. I don't like to get political. I don't like to do it. I'll do it, but I don't like it. <laughs> so I'm going to talk to you tonight about a group of people that I think are getting slighted, that are getting the short end of the stick that are being forgotten in this country, and it's about time we spoke up for ourselves. And that is those of us that are adults that don't have children. We are forgotten people, ladies and gentlemen. People that have kids are the worst, and you have it made. You don't believe it, but you have it made, all right? I work at a public high school, and anytime anyone has a baby, we get an email, a staff email that says, oh, welcome to the world, a new member of the West community. Uh, you know, Elsa Jean, who was born on February 11th, beautiful. <laughs> Eight pound, blood ounce, 23 inches long, born at 1224 p.m. Mom, mom and baby are doing great. And there's always these replies that come back and say, oh, she's so gorgeous, what a beautiful baby. And oh, she looks just like her mother. And oh, coach, she looks like you have a little basketball player coming up. I don't get those emails anymore. Someone took the time to remove me from these mass emails because I would always send a message that would say, oh, look, another beautiful insurance black hole. Because <laughs> it's expensive to have a baby. You have to pay the doctors, the nurses, the OBGYN, the anesthesiologist, there's an overnight stay and everything at the hospital. It costs a lot of money, and that comes from our group insurance as a teacher. That, so I'm paying for this kid, and I don't like this. <laughs> I'm paying for your kid. No, absolutely terrible. I go to the doctor, like the last six years I've gone to the doctor seven times. Here's why. Every year we get a physical that's paid for by the school district because if 90% of the teachers take the physical, we get a reduction in our insurance. The other time I went, says every five years I have to get a neurological exam because I've had 12 concussions including a brain fracture. So they are looking for aneurysms. Those are the only times I go to the doctor. And these people just go, and they, oh, it sucks. I'm getting fucked over on insurance, and it's absolutely terrible. A friend of mine, both of them work in the school district. They had a baby recently. And then mom is like, well, you know, I get my six weeks off. It's paid six weeks off, and it's great. So I talked to the dad who works in my school, and I'm like, oh, looks like Amanda's going to be back to school coming up on Monday. How are you going to work that out? He's like, no, oh, it'll be okay because starting on Monday, I get my six weeks off. And I'm like, you get fucking six weeks off too? Why do you get free time off? Why do you get baby vacation? This is after, I want two weeks off. They didn't pay, well, just give me two weeks off unpaid. I don't care. I'll go anywhere because I am not having babies. Like, he didn't even do anything. He did very little in this process, right? He, whatever he did lasted five minutes. At max. She had to carry the kid for six. Fine. Give her all the time off. Absolutely terrible. And then what else goes along with it is, like, have you ever, I mean, like, do you know what a carbon footprint of these people are? Like, for a baby? Have you ever lived next to someone who's got a baby? The garbage that they make? Like, it's Thursday, garbage day. They already have it out there on Tuesday. It is just overflowing with shitty diapers and all the baby food jars and all this kind of shit. Let me, let me put it in perspective. Have you ever had your garbage man perform a welfare check on you? <laughs> that happened to me once. I, I live alone. Obviously, I'm not married. I'm not dating anyone, right? Because I'm wearing this shit. And like, all of a sudden, it's during the summer. I went golfing in the morning. I came home. It's 9, nine o'clock in the morning. I'm eating my breakfast. I hear the garbage truck pull up. It stops. I hear the door close. Ten seconds later, knock on my door. I get up. Open it. Yes, is there a problem? Oh, well, we were just checking to see if you were okay. <laughs> what do you mean? You haven't, you haven't put your garbage out in like four weeks. I don't, I don't, I don't make any garbage. I just recycle. You've seen my recycling. I mean, is this a problem? Did the cops call? <laughs> Why is a garbage man coming to my door performing a welfare check? Should it be like a paramedics or something? Like, I don't own a cat or a dog, so it hasn't eaten me yet, but it doesn't matter. The other thing with kids is when they get sick. 
You ever have a first time parent and you're there and you're, everyone's holding the baby? I won't fucking hold the baby because I'll drop it and I don't care. But like, like the baby is there and all of a sudden the baby goes, parents freak the fuck out at that point. They're like, oh my God, I knew we shouldn't have went to Walmart. There's people sitting on the other side. That kid at school with yesterday was fucking sick. Did you, did you, did you sanitize the door handle? You did not do that. It's, it's, everyone stay away from my fucking baby right now. There's, everyone, hand sanitizer, hand sanitizer. No, don't bite, but eat it. Eat the hand sanitizer. This is the only way my baby's going to stay healthy. You know what I do when I get sick? If I get a scratchy throat in the morning, I gargle with Jim Bean. <laughs> I do that. You know what? I feel fine the rest of the day. Kills everything down there. Absolutely great. And I'm saving money on insurance. So again, we're going to have our march someday, people without kids. And it's going to be a lot of fun because we can stay out past 8 p.m. That's what they do. Right? <laughs> um, like I said, I'm a public high school teacher. Hold the applause. We get enough adulation from the community at large. I don't need any more. Uh, <laughs> A lot of legislation being introduced to give us guns. <laughs> oh, man. What I need is colored pencils and graph paper. If you could give me that, that would be great. Because that is treated like fucking currency at school where I am. Don't give us guns. I know teachers that shouldn't have scissors on their desk. And you want to give them a Smith & Wesson with some of these kids? No. It's not going to happen. Uh, speaking of paper, um, we got an email right before the semester break. Because we get a shipment of paper the first semester and a shipment of paper the second semester. And they gave us an email saying, uh, we are running out of paper, so whatever's in the copy room is what we have left for the rest of the semester. And you could hear teachers running to the copy room. <laughs> because, I mean, this is finals, right? They're going to be making copies of their tests and everything. Which is why, at the beginning of the year, what I do is I take two reams of paper out of a box and I put them to my desk for that situation. And as soon as we get that email and those teachers run there, I just nonchalantly walk down there with two reams of paper underneath my arm, and I stand next to the copier, and I feel like Pablo fucking Escobar. Because <laughs> 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 it's like, you're like, oh my god, I need to do I know, what's your name, man? You know, she got 150 sheets of paper. I can do them for you right now if you want. Whoa, wait, wait a minute. What's this English? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You have to go front to back. You can't lose the one side. This is a commodity right now. This paper. Find another teacher. Mr. Gerhardt is doing the uh, health exam. He's doing the reproductive system. It'll be great. You do your uh, mice and men on one side. On the other side, we have the vagina and the uterus and all that shit. It'll be beautiful. It'll be absolutely good. I'm doing this for you. I, this is be favor for me to you. All right? Don't give me that fucking look. You want copies? You want your kids to take a test? I will do this for you. I will do this for you right now. The other thing with kids is they, young kids have an unbelievable opportunity to learn nowadays with their, with the internet and their tablets and their phones and all this stuff. They can learn their shapes, they can learn how to count, they can learn how to read and write. Absolutely amazing what these kids can do. When I was growing up, two things. Sesame Street, Mr. Rogers Neighborhood. Woo! All we fucking had, right there. That was the only way you could learn. And I'm taking grad classes right now, and I could read a 20-page article and have to write an essay about it, and I'll sit down next to the I'll just read the whole thing, and I'm like, yeah, I got this. Open up a Google Doc, Google Doc start, start typing, and then all of a sudden my mind will go blank. I won't remember any of that shit. But I go anywhere in the world, and I have to count to something, it's always going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, because that's six of your fucking head. Sesame Street, six of your fucking head, right? Unbelievable. I could be I could be like teaching geometry to my kids and we could be going over the law of cosines and then for some reason x squared plus a squared plus b equals or x squared equals a squared plus b squared minus two ab equals cosine of x. It, I'll forget it, but in the back of my head I will remember the lyrics to teeny little super guy. <laughs> Anybody else remember that? Teeny little super guy pops right up before you. This is shit that sticks with you. I have no reason why. I, it doesn't make any sense. And now Sesame Street is introducing characters, like they're, they're, they're promoting diversity, and they have a blind character so they can teach Braille. And they introduce an autistic character, so they're spreading diversity. We didn't realize we had that when we were growing up. It was there, we just didn't realize it. Elmo, the kid with ADHD, right? Telly, Telly Monster, the slow kid that had to leave the room to take tests every now and then. Big Bird, the kid with the pituitary problem that was always yellow and covered with feathers. Mr. Snuffleupagus, the black kid with the big trunk. <laughs> Harry Monster, the kid in sixth grade that for some reason was six foot two, 220 pounds and covered in hair. Cookie Monster, the girl with the eating problem. They were all there. 
every single one who was there who went before our eyes and we didn't know. We'll end on this one with Mr. Rogers. Anyone see the Mr. Rogers documentary that was out this summer? Woo! It's a good one. We hit the heart, right? Not the one with Tom, uh, Tom Hanks that's coming up, the biopic that's coming up, but an actual documentary. And Mr. Rogers, when he started out, was just a local guy in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He had his little show with his puppets. And he went national. PBS is like, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna take this on. But you have to sell us on what your show is going to be, right? So imagine an executive in like the 1960s from PBS. Not like Don Draper executive, but a guy that's still chain smoking and drinking a lot. And Fred Rogers has to sell him this show. Who's going to be the three? What are you going to be your three first shows? Well, uh, first show is going to be introductory. We're going to introduce the trolley, and, uh, the land of make believe, and, uh, King Friday, and Baby Elaine, and Henrietta Owl. And just show the kids what this is going to be about. Fucking oh, good. Kids love fortune stories. What's number two? Well, uh, we're going to go to Clarinet Factory and show how a clarinet is made from start to finish. They're going to cut down the tree, hollow it out, put the plastic on and the metal, and uh, you know, and then we're going to show it being played with the Pittsburgh Symphony Orchestra. Awesome. Kids love to know how shit's made. What about number three? Well, we're going to talk about uh, 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 we're going to talk about borders and conflict. So I want to talk about Vietnam. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't found the episode, but all I can think of is a little kid talking to Fred Rogers, being like, Mr. Rogers, what's napalm? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a jelly and incendiary device. It's put out a bomb in a plane, and it's dropped, and it blows up, and it sticks to things, and hopefully burns things down, like the forest, or, 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 or shelter, or Charlie. <laughs> Mr. Rogers, who's Charlie? Well, it's its nickname we give the enemy from North Vietnam. You know, it'd be weird if six million North Vietnamese guys were all named Charlie. It's just a nickname. You know how your Uncle Dave drinks a lot and everybody calls him Sponge? He's, we know his name is not Sponge, right? It's just David, right? Mr. Rogers, what's Agent Orange? You know he's a little bastard. You know too much. Let's go over here and eat some fucking fish, you little son of a bitch. Right. Thank you for staying on today. Stick around, Scott Williams, and Bob Cass. Here's where I'm going to wrap this thing up.